Hey everyone. 10 years ago, Marcus and Millichap had its initial public offering. And as I was thinking about this auspicious event, I thought it would be interesting to look at how the economy and commercial real estate have performed over the last 10 years. The last 10 years haven't been smooth sailing. There have definitely been some bumps in the road. But that said, today there are about 20 million more jobs in the US than there were 10 years ago. That's a gain roughly equivalent to the entire employment base of Canada. And the US economy has grown by more than $3.9 trillion. That 10 years of growth is just shy of the total output of the world's fourth largest economy, Germany. So despite the challenges along the way, the US economy is significantly larger and stronger than it was 10 years ago. Now, for commercial real estate investment results, I'm gonna use an example of a $10 million property. In these examples, I'll assume 60% leverage was used, so the capital investment would be about $4 million to acquire a $10 million asset. And for the following examples, I'm only considering appreciation, the increase in the US average price per foot or price per unit over time. I'm not factoring in cash flow or tax benefits or capital improvements or anything like that. I'll start with retail. Basically, retail has been treading water over the last 10 years. This sector survived the e-commerce driven retail apocalypse that everyone was so focused on as well as the global pandemic. After 10 years, that $10 million retail property has increased in value to about 10.5 million based on the change in the average price per square foot. That $500,000 gain on a $4 million investment over 10 years isn't that great of a return. But I want to reiterate, this example just uses the national average price per foot for all retail properties. And many retail assets have outperformed the average. The next property type is office. Office properties appreciated pretty steadily from 2013 through 2019, but the pandemic and hybrid work schedules have taken a heavy toll. Since the pandemic, average office property values have lost ground, and that $10 million property likely has a current market value of about $11.3 million, a gain of $1.3 million on the original $4 million investment. Honestly, both retail and office properties have had major setbacks in the last 10 years, so they generally haven't appreciated as much as other property types. Next, I'll focus on apartments. The last 10 years have been pretty good for apartment investments. Based on the average price per unit, that $10 million property acquired 10 years ago would now be worth about 18.5 million, a gain of $8.5 million on the $4 million investment. Now industrial, the property type that has been at the top of many investors' lists for the last 10 years. Industrial properties have benefited from the growth of e-commerce and a variety of other drivers. Based on average prices, an industrial property acquired 10 years ago for $10 million would be worth an estimated $20.7 million today. That's a gain of about $10.7 million on the $4 million investment. That's a very solid yield. And now for the property type that has increased in value the most over the last 10 years, self-storage. Unlike retail and office properties, self-storage got a boost from the pandemic, which helped drive self-storage values. That $10 million self-storage facility acquired in 2013 is now worth about $26.3 million based on average prices. So a $4 million investment into a self-storage property 10 years ago generated a gain of $16.3 million. That growth was driven in part by a demand surge during the health crisis, but it also reflects changing use patterns. Younger people tend to use storage more actively than past generations, so storage space demand has increased. Now, to give my comparisons a bit more color, a $4 million investment into a 10-year treasury held to maturity would have gained about $1.1 million. 
and a $4 million investment into an S&P 500 index fund 10 years ago would have generated a $5.9 million gain. All in all, commercial real estate did well just on appreciation alone. Office beat the 10-year treasury, while self-storage, industrial, and apartments beat both the treasury and the S&P 500. And remember, the real estate investments likely also generated significant cash flow and tax benefits along the way. Now, as they say, past performance doesn't guarantee future results, but looking forward to the next 10 years, I see a lot of opportunities in commercial real estate. It's a long-term investment, which is why you always need to keep your eyes on the horizon.